this is Vicky, also known as Dragonfly7673. Uh, this is Dragonfly Soars. I'm recording this on Monday, September 24th. It's about 6.30. It is not kitty dinner time, no matter what somebody behind me is trying to say. So if you hear her, I apologize. They don't get dinner until about 8 o'clock. And the thing is, even if I feed her now, at 8 o'clock she'll want dinner. So they have plenty of dry food around. She's just kind of being obnoxious. So, the Susan G. Komen walk was this weekend. It was yesterday, Sunday. Um, I had the pink hair. <laughs> so, the pink hair has actually gone over really well. The Where I work is kind of conservative. And the manager I used to have, he still works there, but he's not my manager anymore. Um, he tended to be pretty conservative, although he kind of let me be because he likes me and he knows, he feels that I am valuable, <laughs> so, and I do a good job, so he usually kind of lets me be, but he would normally kind of give me a little bit of crap about the pink hair. Uh, however, the new manager walked in and said, wow, cool hair, <laughs> which I thought was very funny because they're both really good managers and they have such different takes on life so <laughs> anyway now I do have to say I used splat hair dye um, it comes in two ways you can have the temporary that like stuff that you put on when your hair is dry and then you wash it right back out I didn't do that I didn't feel like it I figured this was my one chance to have bright pink hair um, hi Oh, now you want cuddles. I will say one thing if you're going to use splat hair dye. I put Vaseline around my forehead right here. What I didn't do was put it on my scalp. So I actually have big birthmark splotches, um, which best friend has been giving me so much crap about. And mostly he, what he's really having fun with lately is the idea that I could have bright pink dandruff. So, I'm like, great. And I've read that you can use um, regular toothpaste because it's got granulars and kind of scrub it off, baking soda, um, strong shampoos. I have done all that. It's peeling up a little. It's still there. And I think at this point it's just going to be time is going to have to take care of it because um, my head is starting to get irritated from all the the rubbing because it's getting dry so we're just going to let it be and I just kind of when it's dry I brush it over and hope nobody really notices um, it's really bad when it's wet though <laughs> it's like oh that's lovely so if you're going to do it put Vaseline all around the roots in your scalp that would have been a wise idea. And I did read that later. It's like, oh, well, that would have been smart. Um, oh, well. It will stay pink until it either washes out or I get my hair done again. So, anyway. Luckily, everybody just said, has said that it looks cool and it's pretty and I wouldn't do it on a regular basis, but for having the Susan G. Coleman, it worked. All right, maybe she's not hungry. Maybe she just wants lovies. Except for I'm going to have to put her down if I'm going to show you guys anything. All right, say goodbye to the people. Mm -hmm. So, this week, I have a few things. I have... I started working on these a while back. The first one was done. This is my modified version of the um, Harvest Dew socks. Modified because they are toe up instead of cuff down. Um, also, I didn't do the stitch pattern on the back. I did ribbing instead. And then I also did my own heel. Um, I was still planning on documenting my heel. And I actually took pictures to start documenting. And then I was looking and saw that Katie of Knitting on the Fly just did a Flegel heel. And I'm pretty sure my heel is different than a Flegel heel. But I want to verify before I go posting it as something new. 
Anyway, so I, I did work on this. I don't remember where it was the last time you saw it, but I am now increasing for the gusset. So I should put a gizmo or a thingamadoo or a thingamajig or a dicky do whatever on the sock and mark where I was the previous week, but I never do. Missy is rolling around on the floor at my feet with her belly up, trying to tell me that she's a very cute kitty. This is Fiber Nymph Dye Works yarn in mint chocolate chip. Um, the rest of the info can be found in the show notes and on my project page. So, I also started a sock, and this one has kind of a funny story. To me, it's funny. So I had this moment where best friend wanted to go see Expendables 2. And I realized, again, I didn't have any movie knitting. Movie knitting has to be straight knitting with no, no pattern, no purling. I can sort of purl while I'm... I can sort of purl while I'm in the dark but not as good so I prefer straight knitting I was like crud I don't have anything so the night before we were supposed to go to the movies I started this toe started this toe and then got all the way done with the toe so that it was ready for the movies and I sent him a message at work and said and said you and I was joking and said oh you'll be really happy to know I put something together I've got I've got movie knitting now and he said oh good and I'm like oh and I was like oh yeah like you really care and he said honestly I do you get really twitchy when you're sitting there doing with nothing to do <laughs> and so which made me laugh so on my Ravelry project page these are called movie socks so I don't get twitchy or to prevent twitching or something like that because I was like okay anyway this is Regia it's the design line ombre st stripe it has some really exciting colorway like 4483 but anyway it's pretty and I don't know what kind of heel I'll do yet it probably depends more on where I am when I reach the heel. If I end up, if I really only take these mainly to movies, and I end up at a point where I just have to, you know, either put the sock away or just keep knitting, I will probably do a true afterthought. If I end up at the end of one of my knitting nights being close to the heel, then I might put in a waist yarn for the afterthought heel. Or... Yeah, probably one of those. If I do a gusset increase, um, it prevents it from, from being movie knitting for a while. If all I'm deciding is true afterthought versus afterthought, but basically knitting a tube, it can remain movie knitting, it can just be the movie knitting for a while because we tend to go to a lot more movies together than I ever did before. So. Now I actually need movie knitting, and this can kind of be a standby. All right, I'm going to post a picture of that here just so you can see it. All right, I also worked on the Everlasting Love Shawl this week. Um, so the Harvest Dew Socks are kind of my purse knitting. They're just kind of around. They're there for waiting... Um, periodically, a couple times a week, best friend and I work at different locations and we usually meet for lunch. So they're there for a couple rounds of knitting while I'm waiting for him in the parking garage. They're for conference calls, things like that. The movie knitting is for knitting in the dark. Um, the Everlasting Love Shawl is definitely um, <laughs> home concentrating knitting and this chart is just go 
it is a tough chart. Every round takes a very long time because there's so much going on. I can't memorize it very well. I mean, you can't even see it all, but this is a repeat, you know, with all these stitches in the middle. And while there is some symmetry to it, it's still kind of a pain. Um, if I have the chart on Knit Companion on my iPad right next to me and I can just kind of glance up and do it, it's fine. But I certainly can't take it anywhere. So, and I can't do it if there's a lot of people talking. So if we're just home, kind of watching a DVD, or our best friend is reading a book, I can work on it just fine. But you can see the start of that lotus flower. I told you last week I was on row, I was working on row 133. I don't usually stop in the middle of the row, but so be it. I just saved you guys from a sneeze. Oh, all right. I was on one, row 133. I'm now on row 140. So I got about eight rows done because I wasn't very far on 133. So there are still several rows in this chart um, because this flower is going to... This flower, I think, is one of the coolest parts of the shawl. It just takes concentration. Once I finish this chart, the rest of it is easy peasy. So I'm just kind of plodding through. <laughs> um, but we're to, uh, doing two rows, a pattern row and a plain row, basically takes me a movie. So they're taking a long time right now. But it's coming along. It's beautiful. I love it. Because I have that one, I have not started Malice in Wonderland, which is the mystery shawl by Three Bags Full. Um... So far from what I see of the pattern, I like it. Um, the lace charts are a little odd to me. She's not a chart person. So I don't know if you've ever seen, but on some of the unique sheep uh, patterns, there was some issue because people were saying that the repeats and the written directions didn't line up with the repeats in the chart. And it was like, well, it was true because if the part before the repeat is knit eight and then you have a lace repeat and the first part of that is knit three um, on written directions it will actually say knit eleven that doesn't line up with the way the chart looks they mean the same thing they come out to the same pattern but you have to be aware that they don't aren't necessarily an exact match well because she's not a chart person she charted it like she wrote the written directions. So all over the place, what she has marked as a repeat, she comments that make sure you use removable markers because they're going to be moving around all the time. Every single row, the markers move. Well, if the markers move all the time, they're kind of pointless. And I kind of am hoping that as I get going, maybe, well, I'm hoping maybe somebody else will chart it for one. Um, I'm glad she put a chart in. It's just, I like having markers. I like knowing that all I need to do if I see a mistake is deal with this repeat. But if they're going to be moving all over, I don't know. I don't know what the point is. But I like the look of the shawl. I like the look of the pattern. It looks interesting. It looks challenging. Um, so... I will, I still plan on doing it. I love the colors I picked out for it. I just am not going to do it until the everlasting is done. So, the else this week. I finished my spinning. This was the Greenwood Fiberworks. And I'm going to tell you, every time I've shown this to you, I've told you it was Polworth. I looked it up the other day when I went to log my final pictures. It's not Polworth. It's Merino. I'm sorry. The colorway is confetti. And I will post a picture here.
So I'm not sure how good the light's going to be. Um, the sun went down faster, plus I was doing prize drawing stuff before I even started recording. So I have lights around me. When I looked, when I did my test, it looked okay. So hopefully it's all right. But anyway, so this is Greenwood Fiber Arts Merino. Now I was very excited about this. This is thinner than I have ever spun before. I two plied it, which is why it looks so pretty with the barber pulling. And I got over 400 yards. Um, that's the first time I've ever done that. Now, I do have a confession to make. My Nitty Naughty is a two yard Nitty Naughty. For some reason, I had measured it once before, like taken a strand of yarn, and decided that it was actually um, 1.66 yards, one and two thirds yards. Basically, I decided that it was five feet instead of six feet. So I need to go back and recalculate some of my other uh, skeins that I had finished. However, this one, I know none of them came close to 400, even with my miscalculation. But this one was 400 and 16. So I am very proud of it. Um, it's still got a little bit of thick and thin, but for the most part, this came out pretty consistent. So I'm very happy with this. Um, <laughs> the next thing on the wheel will probably be one of the prizes. So I didn't put anything else on the wheel. I finished that uh, Thursday, maybe. And um, I... Yeah, I think I finished it Thursday and plied it Friday and washed it um, and soaked it. That sounds right. Anyway, I didn't put anything else on the wheel because two of the prizes have optional spinning and until I know for sure whether or not they need to be spun, I wasn't going to start anything. So I figured I'd show you a couple things I got and to go in line with the spinning. The first thing I got is the Into the World uh, September shipment. So once again, I will not talk about it, but I am going to show it. So this is your warning. You should look away. There we go. And now you just saw a picture of the close-up and the inspirational photo. I, every time I get a shipment, I think, ooh, this one's my favorite. And then I have them next to each other, and I'm like, that one's my, no wait, that one's my, that one. I'm gonna say, I, this woman has me just like in love, and I need to start spinning it because even like the feel of it when I'm fluffing it just feels wonderful. So that was Into the World. I'm putting it away. If you were looking away for the, for the because you didn't want to be spoiled, you can look again. Are you back? Okay. Um, other things that came this week, because of the three bags shawl, three bags full shawl, Malice in Wonderland, with the re where she suggests removable markers. Just in case she's not crazy, I ordered a bunch of removable markers from Hide and Sheep. I've actually ordered from them several times. Their cards are cute. Um, this side says, quality products for those who knit or crochet at prices that won't fleece you. E -Y -E -W -E. And on the back, it's their Etsy and their email. But hide and sheep, they have an Etsy shop. I ordered three different sets of removable markers. So one set is squares like this, and I'll show I'll put a picture in. 
Basically, the removable ones have earring hangers. Um, I got one set that is numbers 0 through 9. And one set that is round ones. So... These are the three styles. All of them are the same opening. I will put a picture of the whole of all of them here. I also received in the mail um, my prize from Lynn Zim's Make-A-Wish Foundation uh, drawing where she was doing the oyster run to raise money for Make-A-Wish. The oyster run is kind of like a mix between, it's kind of like Amazing Race. You know, it's got a scavenger hunt type thing. Anyway, my prize is from Lazy Sack Monkey, who is Lisa. And I got a project bag. What is special about this project bag, if you look, um, it has the, here, maybe it's easier on this side. It, it says Denver Oyster 2012, and it has the, their team name was Cupcake Mafia, so it has a Cupcake Mafia logo. Um, it says, Helping Wishes Come True Since 2010. Um, that's the fine print right here. So this was specially made in custom fabric. She also sent a couple of stitch markers. And the inside has black hearts. And it's just very cute. We did have a funny thing when Lisa was messaging me to tell me that she sent it. She was going to message me on Plurk and realize that we weren't friends on Plurk. Both of us probably could have sworn that we were friends because we've seen each other on other people's Plurks all the time. Apparently we never friended each other. So anyway, but it's a very nice bag. It's heavy quilted. So, um, I also got books and I'm, because we're running long and we got the prize stuff, I am not going to run through these. In fact, I haven't even looked through them. So, but I just want to show you. This one I bought from Amazon, Teach Yourself Visually, Hand Spinning. Um, I have heard from several people that it has so many pictures that it can be really helpful. Um, it is written by Judith McKenzie McEwen, I think. And um, it does have a lot of pictures, and it's the little bit I did look at is very simple. The other thing, the other reason I liked it is because it has a whole section on preparing your fiber which in the past I didn't care so much but um, Dara who I met at the alpaca farm um, she she was asking me if I had prepared the alpaca yet which I haven't <laughs> but one of the things I need is uh, like pet slicker combs and she sent me a whole bunch of links on preparing fiber and carding and flicking and, and different things. So between her stuff and the stuff in here, I feel mentally prepared. But, and from what I understand, a pack is a lot easier to deal with than wool because there's no lanolin. Um, but I haven't done it yet. I have the bag sitting here. I've been kind of waiting for some other things to just calm down because that's going to take a while. And I need, the other thing I need is a lingerie bag so that I can easily wash it. Because I have a lingerie bag for my homemade socks, but I just don't want to put the, I don't want to have the fleece and this and my socks share the same bag. Just in case the fleece gets all funny, I don't want to have, then put my socks back in it. And maybe it'll be fine and maybe I'm just overreacting. But I don't know yet. So, um, I will at the end be putting a picture from the alpaca farm because it's one of the two of us that her husband took. It's a it's a good picture of the two of us, and I meant I. She was like giving it to me, and then I totally forgot to put it in. 
In fact, I think I forgot two weeks in a row. So it is definitely going in this week. So anyway, teach yourself visually hand spinning. And then uh, best friend and I stopped at Half Price Books. I don't normally go there, but he likes to go there. And oh, I ended up spending way too much time in the knitting section. And then had to kind of narrow down what I was going to get. Um, I had the first Mason Dixon book, but I never had the second one. So I decided to get it. I hadn't wanted this one as much, so I never wanted to pay full price. And even with the 40% um, off sale, um, I didn't know I was wanted. It's a $30 list price. With 40% off, I think it still came to $17, 18 But as you can see, it was $8. For $8, it's going on my shelf. So I got that. I also got super cute amigurumi animals. I haven't done any amigurumi for a little while. I liked this one because it talked a little bit about how to design your own. And it just had some really cute um it just had some really cute ones uh that i just love like i love this little panda speaking of which the baby panda in dc only lived a week and then it died they're doing an autopsy best friend is very upset about this because he's very concerned that they're going to be extinct in our lifetime a little frog I love the cat on the front. I thought they had, I'm not whole, I'm like flipping too fast. I thought they had interesting poses and things that made them a little more interesting than other Grey Amigurumi books. Now I have other Grey Amigurumi books. I just, if I didn't think this one had something more to offer, I wouldn't have bought another one. I did think this one had more to offer, so I got it. Um, and one more book is actually for mom, and it's mostly because I thought she'd be interested in reading it, and for six bucks I couldn't go wrong. It's called Making Fabergé Style Eggs, and they have like little miniature scenes and stuff, and it looked like something that mom would like. So mom, you're getting a book. Alright, that is all the regular stuff. So, let's get to prizes. Now, I'm going to tell you I'm not going to mail these right away. I went to this to Office Depot and got a pack like this of big bubble mailers. So I was like, okay, I'm going to need to be mail all these. This pack of 12 bubble mailers um, costs $18. I have 24 prizes. Not all of them need this kind of mailer. There's two that won't work this way. But this is excessive. And it was expensive. I'm going, okay, $18 times two packs was $36. And that was before I even mailed the darn things. I got home and I started looking on Amazon to see if I could get them cheaper. And I did find them cheaper. I found a pack of 50 for $10 plus $7 shipping, which would have been a pack of 50 for $17, which was much better. But they didn't have prime shipping on them. Um, prime shipping is where you can get free two-day shipping. And their ship time was anywhere between 4 and 14 days. And that was too wide of a range for me to deal with. Well, then I started thinking, and this is a package I got from somebody when they mailed me fiber. Um, a lot of stuff comes in these kind of packages, these poly mailers. And I'm like, there's no reason I can't use a poly mailer. So I looked up, so I continued looking on Amazon and found... For essentially this size mailer, a little bit bigger, um, I could get a pack of a hundred 
for ten dollars and fifty cents and free shipping and they'll be here Wednesday guess what those office depot ones are going back because at least one set I don't need that many I don't ship that much and they don't ship that much that needs to be protected in a mailer like that so um, okay One more thing, if you are participating in Click for Babies, this is one of the prizes. The Click for Babies is on Knitting on the Fly, Katie's site. Um, so, she didn't have this to show. I'm shipping it. But I know I've heard some of your names on her podcast when she says, Oh, these are from Netta, and these are from, from Living for Fishing, and various people that I know very well. So I know you're watching, so you could ch possibly win that. Um, she needs the hats by October 1st, so you need to be mailing them right now. Um, she did say she will try to keep taking them until the 15th and possibly run them to the hospitals or something and beg and plead. So, but it'll be a lot easier for her if you get them ahead of time. All right, our own prizes. Now, what I did for the, I, had, I split up my prizes into three lists. I had the over 50 list, the over 25 list, and the everybody list. And then I cut them into strips like this. I because on the website I could download a spreadsheet. So I downloaded the spreadsheet and kept the pertinent information and then cut them into strips and put them in a baggie. Um so I've got this bag is for the 50, and this bag is for the 25. Um if you donated 50, you're in the 50, the 25, and the everything. If you're in the 25, you're if you did 25, you're in the 25 and the everything. So, and I decided that I don't care if somebody wins more than one thing because it's going to be more complicated than it's worth for the slim possibility. My only rule ha is that you can't win something you donated. Because that's just silly. If you sent it to me as a donation, you probably don't want it back. So, in the first drawing of the everything list, nobody that donated got it. So, anyway, it didn't come up. So, so here's the next thing I did. I have business cards. Um, on the back, I wrote thing. I wrote what the prize was and the number. I then put. Here's my bag full of everybody, except it's not everybody anymore because I already drew out of it. So here's my everyday, and I put the business cards in there. I shook it all up. I then drew out one business card and one strip of paper. Looked at them, found what prize the business card said, and then put the business card and the strip of paper into the bag that has the prize. So... Um, so like this is the Knitters for Knockers, it says so on the business card, and the winner was Miss G Knits, so she's going to know hers already. Everybody else I'll put at the end. So I just, I drew a business card, I drew a name, and I put them together until they were all gone. That seemed the fairest way to do it because people donated at different times and everything. So. I will put a montage at the end that will have the winners with a picture of what they won. So now we have the 25 or higher. This one I'm not going to do the same way because there's only five of them. So I'm just going to pick up a prize and draw a name. This prize is Volmice. This was the 
brooch or something. It basically, I think, meant rosy red lips or something like that. You can't, It's probably showing up really bad right now. But I'm going to draw a name out of the 25 bag. They're stuck together, but I'm taking the one I had my hand on. Jeanette, 93. I'm going to put her name and the prize and the business card in here. So, Jeanette 93. This is the other skein of Volmice. This was donated by my friend. Um, it is Reiku Regenhogen, and I glazed rainbow, or rainbow glaze, something like that. So this is the Superwash Twin, reaching into the bag, Mim58, so Mary, you won this one. Sorry for the noise. I just realized that one didn't actually have a bag yet. Alright, so. And this slow part is why we're not doing all of them on air. <coughs> one thing I did is I, in one bag, the everything, every those strips are white, and the next one, and the 25, they're pink, and then the other one, they're blue. So I can take a quick glance and see if I see pink or not in them. So, this is the hand spun loop bat. So this was a loop bat. It was 5.2 ounces. Spring has sprung. Um, and the bat was is already spun by my friend Jenny. It's obviously already spun. You can see that. My friend Fran won this. Um, she is a very good friend. She's been I've been friends with her for almost five years now. She lives locally and she owes me a coffee date. So now I can tell her she has to meet me because I have her prize. And yes, I'm going to hold it for ransom. We've been trying to get together and right now it looks like we won't be able to get together until after Rhinebeck because both of us are going opposite directions all the time. All right. The next item is the Knit Picks Sock Kit. This is the Aperka a Socks. Um, this actually, when I looked at it, because I did kind of peek at the pattern, <laughs> has an afterthought heel, um, which I think would make it easier because you would knit the pattern in the tube and then you would build the heel in which means you can build the heel in as deep as you need to essentially um, by playing around with it and I think that should fit a whole lot better than the way my um, the socks I did before which I really need to do another Farrell sock just to prove to myself I can um, anyway we're reaching here. The winner is Debnitz 2. So, Debnitz 2, you got the, the sock kit. And I have not looked at your work to see if you have done Fair Isle. But I know you can do it. I can help. Alright, the 
the last for the 25 or over is the gorgeous project bag, leather project bag that Tamsie sent. Um, it has lots of pockets, the tartan fabric, some zippered pockets, some open pockets. So, it's really very beautiful and it smells leathery. I love that smell. Alright. It has a very nice bag. I'm assuming it's probably what the bag that she got it in. And I saved the box that she sent it in so that I could ship it back out. Alright. The project bag is going to... Oh! Willow Fairy Knits. Helena from the Willow Fairy Knits podcast. Um, she won. <laughs> That's going to be expensive shipping. <laughs> I love you, Helena. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Got one last prize. Now, you guys saw this before, but this is the absolutely wonderful shawl that my sister made. It's a little shawlette. It's beautiful. Um, it's for the Little Miss. It, it's going to be eventually a paid pattern for Little Miss Hannah Foundation. It was designed by her friend Kiri. And I really wanted to keep it. It's really gorgeous. So, this is the last one. All right, and here's the right bag. Da 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 da. <gasps> Tina, a blooming knitter of the Knitting Blooms podcast, won the shawl, and that's actually really great because I know she's the she will. I know all of you would really appreciate it, but I know that Tina especially will really, really enjoy this. So, that is absolutely wonderful. All right. That is all the prizes. Um, I will, after I close down, I will put the rest of the prizes, like I said, I'll put the picture and the person that won. I will also put the names on the website, and um, I will send out an email to you. Everybody, when they did their donation, had to give me an email address as part of the donation process, so that's the email I will email you at. Um, I am just going to, in the email, say, hey, you won a prize, watch the podcast, or go out to the website to see what you won, and get back to me. If you won, I am going to need your full name and your shipping address. Please may send me your full name. Um, so far, the the um, post office has been okay because I kind of have fudged a couple people on their last name and just pretended to put a last name. <laughs> or I've put like their online name with their other name. Anyway, it's... So far, things have gotten to where they go, but I really, it will be a lot better if you give me your first and last name. Um, I have addresses for, for everybody because you gave it during your donation, but I don't know if everybody if gave the address they would want their prize shipped to. So, contact me. Um, like I said, I will send an email, and I'll just explain, and you'll come back to me. If you won a spinning prize, or a fiber prize. There were three fiber prizes. Two from me and one from Helena, Willow Fairy. The, all three have optional spinning. If you are a spinner, um, you can have the fiber and have fun and enjoy it. If you are not a spinner, let me know and we will arrange to get spinning done. Um, the person that won Helena's, I will put you guys in contact with each other and then you guys can go from there. 
the two from me. I'm still going to say you can give me a little bit of direction, um, like whether you want it to be two ply or Navajo plied, but my skills are still developing and I can't always make it do what I think I want it to do. So bear with me. I will give you a nice consistent yarn within my skill set. I can't promise a specific thickness. But I'm getting better. See? <laughs> I've been practicing for you guys. So watch the prizes at the end. Um, I'm going to put in the song by Adele. I can't think what the name of it is right now. And I'm choosing that song because it is the song they were playing during the opening ceremonies at the Susan G. Komen Walk. So there'll be prizes. There'll be pictures of the team, pictures of Darren and I, and there's some other ones. What I've started doing is putting a new folder of save for podcast pictures. So I stopped forgetting. <laughs> I'll stop babbling now. I will see you guys all next week. Um, no, I know this is a long one. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys all later. Bye. There's a fire starting in my heart, reaching a fever pitch, and it's bringing me out the dark. Finally, I can see you, Crystal.